the East India Company legal history so let's start legal history history of uh, legal development in India the uh, India uh, the legal development the modern legal development started with the coming of East India Company in India though they have made us slaves they took over uh, our independence but as every cloud has a silver lining same was the case with the East India Company the silver lining was the development of legal modern legal in India the development of modern law in India the modern law started developing after coming of East India Company so let's learn about East India Company what was East India Company uh, we all know about it what uh, where is initial functions what where its initial powers how did it work and uh, why it 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 is what it was a state in into itself and who were controlling that east india company how britain controlled that east india company so east india company was uh, created by charter of queen elizabeth issued in 31st 12 1600 so something around 400 years back queen elizabeth by a charter created east india company now initially it was for 15 years the purpose of the company was for 15 years later on james one through another charter gave it a it a perpetual life <coughs> when james one uh, gave it a perpetual life he, in a charter it determined that do it as a perpetual life but its perpetual life can be revoked by giving 3 years notice on the condition that it is creating a injury to the nation nation means britain because britain created the east india company now when the initially the east india company uh, contained what is called a general court the general court was responsible for the working of uh, the east india company so the total member of company constituted what is called a general court in this general court there was a governor and there were 24 members they were all elected for one years they could be reelected so these t- t- governor and 24 member formed a uh, general court they could be removed they were for one year they could be removed before one year so this was the basic uh, creation of east india company in start so let us summarize that the east india company was created by a charter of the queen elizabeth in 13 uh, sorry 31st december 1600 some 4 400 years back this charter by the charter it was incorporated in england so the place of incorporation was england and the real name of east india company was the governor and company of merchant of london trading into east indies let me repeat it the governor and the company there was a governor and there was a company there were a governor and there were 24 directors so the governor and company of merchants of london they were merchant of london trading into east indies and they were trading uh, after the cape of good home into east indies so in the beginning it was created for 15 years and it could be revoked uh, if there uh, if, if the uh, government feel that there could be injury to nation and uh, there should be a notice of 3 years should be given the total number of members should be 24 members plus uh, there should be a governor now this uh, total uh, constituted a general court the governor and director to, together were called called court of director the court of director was elected annually but its member were eligible for re-election however they could be removed from office by a general court even before the expiry of the term now uh, what were the powers and functions of east india company originally power and function of east india company the company was originally created to carry on and enjoy exclusive trading right in countries lying beyond cape of good hope eastwards that is asia and africa so uh, 
the company was originally created to carry on and enjoy ek exclusive trading rights and the exclusive trading rights were beyond the cape of good hope eastwards that is asia and africa now in that particular places only east india company could uh, do trade if any other citizen of britain wants to do trade it has to take license from east india company so no british citizen could carry trade in this area without a license from the company at the same time some more powers were given to the company and they were in legislative nature because uh, the, the places were quite distant at that particular point of time and they have to administer their local area and there would have been quite time lag to take uh, justice from britain so legislative uh, some legislative powers were also given the company in its general code could pass law order ordinances for its good governance for its servants and for furtherance and continuance of its trade and tariff it could punish the person disobeying its law however no punishment could be given which was unreasonable or contrary to law statute or custom of england so the once 24 directors and a governor they were forming general court or a court of directors this court of director uh, had a power in nature of legislative power the general court could pass law order ordinances for good governance for its servant for furtherance and continuance of trade and tariff so it could pass for its servant the intention is for the, the the word written over here is for its servant not servants of india so they couldn't pass the uh, laws for indians they could pass for its servants and uh, the, the uh, for good governance and for furtherance of trade and uh, profession this was over there but it should be reasonable and it shouldn't go contrary to the customs principles laws of england so it has to be in harmony with laws of england these were the power and functions of east india company originally so now to summarize east india company was made uh, 400 years back so on 1312 1600 by uh, queen elizabeth issuing a charter and in that charter it was initially for 15 years then it was for perpetual life and then this uh, after gaining perpetual life uh, by james 1 through a charter james 1 gave a perpetual life to this east india company the east india company can uh, be wound up if if it was injurious to nation by giving a notice of 3 years there was a court of director uh, there were uh, one governor and 24 directors uh, later on the legislative powers were given to the uh, uh, company and uh, they could trade after the cape of cape of good hope uh, trading rights were eastward cape of good hope and any any uh, person which belong to britain cannot trade in this particular areas it can trade in this particular areas only after getting permission from east india company so uh, it had a monopoly in this area as regards trade is concerned secondly it enjoyed legislative power but those legislative power cannot go against laws customs of england they should be reasonable and uh, the power was with uh, court of directors these court of director were elected annually but its member were uh, eligible for re-election but they could be removed from uh, office even uh, before expiry of their term and their ex- their term was one year so this was the main thing which east india company came through a charter is 1600 and then amended charter in 1609 first it was for 15 years then 1609 uh, 31 may 31st may 1609 it was a perpetual company incorporated in london and its name was the governor and company of merchant of london trading into east india company east indies trading into east indies